Section 1 Introduction We're going to delve into the world of deep learning, where we've seen a shift from training models for specific tasks to a more universal approach. This involves pre-training models on a large scale, without a specific task in mind, with the goal of creating a model that can be adapted quickly and easily to a variety of tasks. These models are often referred to as foundation models. These pre-trained models have proven to be reliable for a range of tasks, and they can be adapted using simple and cost-effective methods. One such method is linear probing, which is part of the broader concept of transfer learning. Transfer learning is a key technique for adapting pre-trained models to new tasks. Traditionally, this has involved either full fine-tuning, which is often the most effective but also the most expensive method, or linear probing, which is cheaper but often less effective. However, a new approach has emerged recently, known as model reprogramming or visual prompting. This method is proving to be a strong competitor to linear probing, both in terms of performance and cost. The idea behind visual prompting is to learn a type of noise that, when applied to the input samples of the target dataset, allows the pre-trained model to correctly classify the reprogrammed sample without any changes to the model's weights. This process aligns the features of the target data with those of the source data, and it doesn't require any updates to the network's weights, making it a highly efficient method. While there has been a lot of research into the performance of linear probing and visual prompting under different conditions, there has been less focus on how these methods perform under constraints of data sparsity and model sparsity. In this paper, we aim to explore how these constraints affect the transfer of a pre-trained model to different target data using visual prompting and linear probing. We'll look at how these methods perform in situations where there is limited data available, and we'll also examine their performance with a type of model known as lottery tickets, which are based on the lottery ticket hypothesis. We'll also investigate how the transfer of lottery tickets via linear probing and visual prompting affects the calibration of the model on the target task, and how this compares to their dense counterparts. Despite recent efforts to improve the fairness and reliability of models, as well as pruning strategies and the resulting models, there is still a lot we don't know about the reliability of visual prompting as a method of adaptation. We aim to fill this gap by examining how visual prompting is affected by varying levels of model sparsity, and how it compares to transfer using linear probing. Our main contributions in this paper are as follows. 1. We provide a comprehensive empirical study on the impact of sparsity on the transferability of pre-trained models using visual prompting and linear probing. 2. We organize our findings into case studies to provide detailed information on how different constraints affect transfer in different target data settings. 3. Through our analysis of eight datasets, we show that certain target domains benefit from transferring a lottery ticket instead of their parent network, while in others it has a negative impact on performance. 4. For the first time, we study the negative impact of using lottery tickets at varying levels of sparsity on the calibration of the final model obtained after transfer to the downstream target task using both visual prompting and linear probing. Section Summary The section introduces the concept of foundation models, FM, which are pre-trained models that aim to provide strong universal representations for various downstream tasks. Transfer learning methods such as linear probing, LP, and visual prompting, VP, have been used to adapt these models to different tasks. The study focuses on understanding the impact of data and model sparsity on the transferability of pre-trained models, specifically lottery tickets, LT, and compares the performance of LP and VP. The findings suggest that the transfer of LT can have varying effects on different target domains, and using LT at different levels of sparsity can negatively impact the calibration of the final model obtained through transfer. Section 2 Background and Related Works Let's delve into the background and related works of this study. We'll start with the concept of model reprogramming and visual prompting, then move on to lottery tickets and transfer learning, and finally, we'll discuss the calibration of networks. Model reprogramming is a novel method for fine-tuning models that is highly efficient in terms of parameters. It involves adding two trainable modules, an input transformation layer and an output mapping layer, to a pre-existing model. This is done to facilitate transfer learning, where the model is adapted to perform a new task. During the training process, only the parameters of these new layers are updated, while the rest of the model remains unchanged. This method is particularly effective for cross-domain learning, where the original model and the new task are from completely different fields. For instance, it has been successfully used to adapt computer vision models for biomedical image classification, speech models for time series classification, and language models for protein sequence learning. When the original and new tasks are both related to image classification, Model reprogramming is similar to a process called visual prompting, VP. In simple terms, 
VP involves adding a universal trainable padding operation to every image for input transformation, and defining a mapping function from the original label classes to the new label classes for output mapping. Let's break down the mathematical aspect of this. Suppose we have n pairs of data samples and their corresponding classification labels for a target image classification task. Each image has dimensions w by h by c, where w is the width, h is the height, and c is the number of color channels. Each label is a number from 1 to k, where k is the total number of image class labels. We have a pre-trained image classifier that takes an image as input and gives a prediction of probabilities over k prime classes. In the standard VP training procedure, a masked perturbation is added to a zero padded version of the image to match the input dimension of the pre-trained model. At the model output, a mapping function is assigned for every target class label such that it gives the prediction probability of the class for an image in the target domain. VP trains the parameters associated with the input transformation and or the output mapping layers based on task-specific loss evaluated on the data samples and their labels. Moving on to lottery tickets and transfer learning, lottery tickets are sparse subnetworks embedded within larger, overparameterized parent neural networks. These subnetworks often perform as well as, or even better than, the original model when trained with the same initial parameters. The process of obtaining a lottery ticket involves training a model, devising a masking strategy to obtain a binary mask on the final model parameters, and then retraining the subnetwork using the non-zero weights of the mask network with the original initial parameters. Given the trend towards efficient transfer learning, using pruned models for transfer learning has been a topic of interest in recent studies. Some researchers have explored the effectiveness of model compression using pruning, optimizing BERT lottery ticket discovery to preserve performance, and the effect of pruning on resource-efficient inference. Lastly, let's discuss the calibration of networks. Initial studies have shown that neural networks often produce accurate but overconfident predictions. This problem can be exacerbated by certain sparse training regimes. Despite the focus on improving efficacy and adaptation speed using pruned models, there has been a lack of studies analyzing the reliability of transfer learning using pruned models. This overconfidence can lead to the model making crucial mistakes, which can pose safety issues in applications such as self-driving cars and healthcare. Recent studies have explored the calibration of pruned models, proposed new sparse training regimes for better calibration of lottery tickets, and included calibration mechanisms in pruning techniques. Despite the promising results of model reprogramming on a variety of downstream tasks, the reliability of this new method remains largely unexplored. Section Summary Model reprogramming is a parameter-efficient fine-tuning method that allows for cross-domain learning by inserting trainable modules into a pre-trained model. Visual prompting is a specific type of model reprogramming that uses input transformations and output mappings to achieve transfer learning in image classification tasks. Additionally, the use of lottery tickets, which are sparse subnetworks embedded in overparameterized parent networks, has shown promise in transfer learning but the reliability and calibration of pruned models in this context still need further exploration. Section 3 Results In this section, we'll delve into the findings from our comprehensive study. Our goal is to understand how linear probing and visual prompting compare in terms of performance when faced with data and model scarcity, and how reliable they are when the model is sparse. To start, let's talk about our experimental setup. We used eight different datasets that cover a range of tasks, including CIFAR10, SVHN, GTSRB, DTD, Flowers 102, Oxford Pets, Eurosat, and Caltech 101. All our experiments were based on the RESNET50 architecture and its derived lottery tickets at various levels of sparsity. These were all pre-trained on the ImageNet minus 1K classification task. Interestingly, most of these lottery tickets outperformed the parent network in terms of accuracy on the pre-training dataset. We chose RESNET50 for this study because it's widely used for various transfer tasks and there's a lot of research available on sparsity in the ResNet class of architectures. To ensure our results were consistent and statistically significant, we ran all configurations with three seeds, totaling over 4,000 experiments. We used ILMVP, the leading visual prompting method, for our experiments. Before we proceed, let's define some terms. Delta refers to the difference in accuracy between the dense model and the corresponding lottery ticket at a given level of sparsity and data budget. S or percent sparsity for lottery tickets refers to the percentage of remaining weights in the model, or in other words, the capacity of the lottery ticket. And shots refers to the number of samples per class used during training. 
Now, let's discuss the impact of sparsity constraints on transfer performance. We noticed two main patterns about the transfer of lottery tickets via linear probing and visual prompting, which we'll discuss in the following case studies. In our first case study, we found that lottery tickets generally hinder performance. We compared the performance of the sparsest lottery ticket, with 11.571% sparsity, and the dense model at different data budgets when transferred to the CIFAR-10, Oxford PETS, and Caltech 101 datasets via ILMVP and LP. For example, in the CIFAR-10 dataset, the dense model outperformed the lottery ticket for every N-shots budget, regardless of whether we used LP or ILMVP for transfer. The negative impact of the lottery ticket was particularly noticeable with ILMVP. For instance, in the 20-shot configurations, lottery tickets at all levels of sparsity had an average 20% reduction in top-1 accuracy compared to their dense counterparts. With LP, the performance drop due to the lottery ticket wasn't as severe, but it increased as the data budget decreased. This trend was consistent across the Oxford PETS and Caltech 101 datasets as well. In these cases, lottery tickets at all levels of sparsity negatively affected performance, and this negative impact was more pronounced for models transferred using ILMVP compared to LP. In summary, in this case study, we found that the transfer of lottery tickets using ILMVP was more negatively affected compared to the dense models. In other words, lottery tickets generally hinder performance, and visual prompting doesn't perform as well as linear probing. Section Summary In this section, the authors conducted an extensive analysis comparing the downstream performance of linear probing and visual prompting under conditions of data and model sparsity. They used eight target datasets and the RESNET50 architecture with different sparsity levels. The results showed that lottery tickets hurt overall performance, with visual prompting being more detrimentally impacted compared to linear probing. Section 3.2.2 Case Study 2 Lottery Tickets Hurt in Specific Settings in this section, we'll delve into a second case study, focusing on the specific circumstances where lottery tickets, LTs, may not perform as expected. We'll compare the performance of the sparsest LT and the dense model under different data budgets, using two transfer methods, ILMVP and LP. We'll apply these to three datasets, SVHN, GTSRB, and Flowers 102. Let's start with the SVHN dataset. We noticed a trend that differs from what we observed in the previous section. In some instances, the dense model outperformed the LT with 11.571% sparsity, but in other cases, the opposite was true. However, this pattern didn't hold for the GTSRB and Flowers 102 datasets. For GTSRB, the dense model generally performed better, especially for data budgets above 20 shots when using ILMVP. For Flowers 102, the sparsest LT surprisingly outperformed the dense model when using ILMVP. The performance gap between the sparsest LT and the dense model wasn't as noticeable as in the previous section, and they performed similarly across different data sparsity settings. Next, we noticed that the LTs generally performed better than the dense model on the SVHN dataset when using ILMVP, except for the one-shot and 20-shot settings. The trend was more complex when using LP. For the 20, 50, and 100-shot settings, LTs negatively impacted the top 1 accuracy. However, for the remaining settings, and particularly for the full data setting, transferring LTs using LP was actually more effective than using the dense model. For the GTSRB dataset, we observed a clearer trend when using ILMVP. For fewer shot settings like 1, 2, 5, and 10 shots, LTs outperformed the dense models. However, for larger data budgets from 20 shot to full data settings, LTs negatively impacted the transfer compared to the dense models. When using LP, except for the one-shot setting, transferring LTs negatively impacted the top one accuracy across all data budget settings and model sparsity states compared to the dense model. The pattern was reversed for the Flowers 102 dataset. Using ILMVP, the LTs performed better or similarly to the dense model across all settings. When using LP, the dense model performed better on the few shot settings, but as we increased the data budget to more than 10 shots, the LTs tended to perform better overall. In conclusion, this case study shows that there's no clear pattern in visual prompting or linear probing. It's usually in very few shot settings or full data settings where we see a clear advantage of transferring lottery tickets using one method over the other. Section Summary In this case study, we compare the performance of sparse lottery tickets, LT, and dense models at different data budgets when transferred using different methods, ILMVP and LP, to various datasets. 
The results show that the performance of the dense model is sometimes superior to the sparse LT, while in other cases, the sparse LT outperforms the dense model. The performance gap between the sparse LT and the dense model is not as prominent when using LP and ILMVP, and they perform similarly across different data sparsity settings. Section 3.2.3 Outlier Cases In our research, we've noticed two unusual cases in our experiments, which we found in the DTD and Eurosat datasets. We've taken a closer look at these outliers in the appendix of our paper. Next, we've analyzed the calibration error metrics of prompting using a method called ILMVP. We've compared this to the calibration of linear probing for dense models and lottery tickets at different levels of sparsity. To evaluate the reliability of uncertainty estimates provided by linear probing and visual prompting, we've used a metric called the expected calibration error, ECE. This metric is calculated by taking the sum of the absolute difference between the accuracy and confidence of each bin, multiplied by the proportion of predictions in that bin. Here, a bin refers to a group of predictions. While there are other calibration metrics that are more specific to settings such as dropout training and deep ensembles, ECE remains the conventional mode of calibration evaluation. It's suitable for measuring the reliability of models in our setting. We've studied the ECE metric only in the full data setting, for both dense models and lottery tickets at various levels of sparsity. We've noticed that under few shot settings, models tend to produce overconfident predictions due to overfitting. Comparing the ECE under these settings wouldn't be an accurate or representative way to compare the calibration between linear probing and visual prompting. From our observations, we found that for both prompting and linear probing, the expected calibration error of lottery tickets is usually much higher than their dense counterpart. More specifically, the calibration error increases more when going from the dense model to lottery tickets in linear probing, compared to visual prompting. We've also noticed that as the lottery tickets get sparser, the ECE tends to increase. On all datasets except Oxford Pets, the ECE of visual prompting on lottery tickets is much lower than that of linear probing. In most of these settings, the ECE of linear probing is almost two to three times in magnitude of the prompting counterparts, and in cases like Caltech 101 this becomes roughly four times. On dense models, the calibration of the two methods is often comparable. However, in some cases, linear probing is even better than prompting. Oxford Pets is an exception, where linear probing has better ECE than prompting on both dense models and lottery tickets. Despite the comparable performances across sparsity states of models transferred using both linear probing and visual prompting, we've observed that in most cases the ECE in the case of linear probing usually tends to get up to twice as worse with increasing sparsity of the lottery tickets as compared to visual prompting. These trends suggest that reprogrammed models are generally more reliable compared to linear probed models. While for both these methods lottery tickets are relatively less reliably transferred compared to their corresponding dense models, the calibration of reprogrammed lottery tickets does not worsen significantly in comparison to linear probing. These results also suggest that although lottery tickets may match dense models in terms of efficiency, in terms of reliability, dense models are still superior. Linear probing leads to higher levels of overconfidence as the lottery tickets get sparser as compared to visual prompting.